Hey guys, in Expandable at 640x480 on a 1GHz Panem 3 for example, the old TNT2 is faster than the GeForce 4, the FX5800 and the FX5950 Ultra. And at 1024x768, the GeForce 2 beats all the other cards. Yes, that's right, it is faster than the GeForce 3, 4 and FX. Over 1,400 benchmark runs went into producing this video with some very interesting findings. We have the TNT2, GeForce 256, GeForce 2 GTS, we got the GeForce 3, 4 and also the FX5800 and 5950 Ultra. In the past I usually recommend the driver version 4523, but I was wrong. So which video card and driver version is the best for Windows 98 retro gaming? Okay, let's dive straight into results. The first game is Expendable running at 640 by 480. We've got the FPS on the vertical axis and on the horizontal you can see the driver version. So we're starting with uh, driver 3.68 and we're going all the way up to 8198, which is the final driver. And the TNT2, uh, it's the blue color, so you can just identify the cards up here. So there's not much of a performance loss, a little bit from 80 to around 75. But look at that, that's the GeForce 256. The very first driver is indeed the fastest and from there on we're just losing performance. We can also see that the last driver doesn't support some of the older cards anymore. This is the GeForce 2 GTS. Everything looks pretty good. This is a bit of an outliner here, but we can once again see that the older drivers have uh, more speed and as we go with new drivers, we're losing performance. Let's move on to the GeForce 3, the yellow one. Same trend, but we're starting off with fairly good speed and then the performance goes down. But look at that, the final driver, a um, bit of a last hurrah, so to speak. Let's move on to the GeForce 4. It starts around here and then it just goes uh, downhill from there. The FX 5800 is even worse. Look at that. It starts uh, way uh, below everything else and then performance so keeps diving. But the final driver actually redeems itself a little bit. And here we've got the FX 5950 Ultra. Doesn't change the outcome at all. Um, at this resolution and on this machine, the older video cards and the older drivers are definitely the way to go. Let's have a look at 1024 by 768. So here more stress goes onto the video card. Here we have the TNT2. This is the GeForce 256. Up until the driver version uh, 3082, everything seems fine, but then performance goes down. Here we have the GeForce 2 GTS, and we can see uh, these three driver versions are indeed the quickest, and then performance drops. Here we have the GeForce 3, which uh, shows the same picture as the GeForce 2 GTS. That's the GeForce 4. And once again, we've got the FX5800 and the 5950 Ultra struggling quite a bit. And now we're ramping up the resolution to 1600 by 1200. The TNT2 really struggles. The uh, resolution is just way beyond what it can do. Here we have got the GeForce 256 and we can see um, lots of bugs. So uh, this uh, video card simply didn't display the resolution uh, 1600 by 1200 correctly. The GeForce 2 GTS shows the same behavior, but at least we're getting uh, fairly decent performance. The GeForce 3, uh, very strong in this game, starting off with the 805 driver and doing really well. Here we've got the GeForce 4, and once again, the GeForce 4, because it uses uh, an, a new driver, it's not supported with the older drivers, it uh, once again starts off with lower performance. And just like before, we've got the FX5800, and the 5950 uh, behind the other cards. Okay, the next game is Dracan, also running at 640 by 480. Here we've got the TNT2, uh, the GeForce 256. Once again, we can see performance going down with the uh, later drivers and really the oldest driver is the fastest. Here we've got the GeForce 2 and also the GeForce 3 here, showing the same picture, the GeForce 4, and here we've got the FX 5800, once again, slower than everything else. And finally, the 5950 Ultra. Let's have a look at 1024 by 768. Here we've got the TNT2, which struggles to hit even 30 FPS. The GeForce 256 does a lot better with performance uh, dropping off around uh, 4523. This is the GeForce 2 GTS, runs the game. Um, this video card runs the game really well above 60 FPS. So that's, that would be a good pick. And here we've got the GeForce 3. As long as you stick with the 805 driver, you're not losing any performance, but the later drivers definitely losing performance.
Here we have the GeForce 4, and you can see that although the GeForce 4 is a lot more powerful, because we are using a more modern driver, straight out of the gate, it loses performance against the GeForce 2 and 3. Here we've got the FX 5800, same uh, picture as in the other game, uh, slower out of the gate, and here's the 5950 Ultra. And once again, we can see that the very final driver actually um, improves performance uh, for the FX series. And at 1600 by 1200, the TNT2 once again is uh, not really suitable. Here we've got the GeForce 256, which also struggles to reach 30 FPS. The GeForce 2 GDS does a lot better. We're now up to 40 FPS and we can see the GeForce 3 now. So this is the first time we're seeing a uh, new driver actually uh, gaining performance. So it starts off a bit slower, but uh, around about here, we're getting a nice performance boost. Uh, just above 50 fps and here we've got the geforce 4 so so far this is the quickest video card and that should remain because the fx cards they really struggle so at this resolution you want to go with the geforce 4 and we've got another dark 3d game this is unreal tournament at 640 by 480 so you noticed we skipped the tnt2 uh that video card just had glitches you couldn't uh, navigate the user interface basically so here we've got the geforce uh, 256 and yeah we're not losing as much performance anymore uh, above uh, 60 fps uh, across all the driver versions same goes for the geforce 2 gts here's the geforce 3 geforce 4 the fx 5800 and the uh, 950 ultra where i had a lot of, a lot of issues with the fx series the later drivers just wouldn't work with this game at all but we can see that uh, all it takes is a geforce 256 or geforce uh, 2 to run this game maxed out on a pentium 3 running at one gigahertz let's have a look at 1024 by 768 this resolution uh, worked because it was the default resolution i didn't have to change resolution and the user interface didn't glitch out GeForce 256, uh, quite a bit stronger. Here we've got the GeForce 2 GDS uh, above 70 FPS. That's the GeForce 3, GeForce 4, the FX cards. So here we can see that, yeah, if you've got a GeForce 2, you're getting pretty much the top performance with uh, those two early drivers, 532 and 631. So we had a look at dark 3D games. Let's have a look at OpenGL if we're getting similar results. We've got Quake 2 running at 640 by 480. Here we've got the TNT 2 and it's clear um, at this resolution, the uh, game runs uh, fast on any video card. Really, we're getting over 100 FPS. The GeForce 256, however, uh, a lot faster around uh, just over 200 FPS. Here we've got the GeForce 2 GDS even faster. We're getting now close to 250 and here we've got the GeForce 3, the GeForce 4, and our two FX cards. So a couple of things stand out. Firstly, we don't get as much of a performance loss with uh, the later driver versions, although we can still see some kind of performance loss. And once again, if you want to pick the fastest one, that would be a GeForce 2 with an early 532 driver. So let's have a look at 1024 by 768. The TNT2 definitely struggles to run 60 FPS in this game. The 256 does a lot better and we can actually see it getting a performance boost with the later drivers compared to the, uh, the first two. Here we've got the GeForce 2 uh, also picking up speed. So Quake 2 must have been a, a game that Nvidia uh, focused on to get it uh, run faster with later drivers. Here we've got the GeForce 3 showing solid performance and here's the GeForce 4. So uh, around about here with these driver versions from 805 to 3082, we're getting top performance, but performance drops off a little bit uh, past that point. And here we've got the FX 5800, really good performance with uh, 4523 drivers. Uh, actually, this is the fastest result. And here we've got the uh, 5950 Ultra. And once again, the final driver, a bit of a last hurrah on the FX series. So let's have a look at 1600 by 1200, the TNT2 and the 256 uh, not able to reach 60 FPS. The GeForce 2 can uh, achieve that goal. Here we've got the GeForce 3, so massive jump in performance. We're getting now uh, 160 FPS. Let's see if the GeForce 4 can do better. Yes, it can. And here we've got the FX cards. So what is interesting um, is that the 5950 Ultra does uh, better in this game. Very likely to do with the higher memory bandwidth at that resolution. So in this game, uh, go with a GeForce 4 and either with these two drivers for best performance. Now, of course, we also tested Quake 3. So let's have a look. TNT 2. 
Here we've got the 256, the GeForce 2, the GeForce 3, the 4, the 5800, and the 5950 Ultra. Now, Quake 3 was uh, the benchmarking game. So uh, it's clear that NVIDIA spent a lot of time to make sure that all the video cards run well in this game. And minimal, we, we're seeing minimal performance loss with the latest drivers, but uh, pretty much we're getting very consistent, uh, very consistent performance across the board. Let's have a look if that changes with 1024 by 768. So we can see here the 256 gaining speed with later drivers. So once again, Nvidia working hard to squeeze more FPS out of this game. Same goes for the uh, GeForce 2. Here we've got the GeForce 3, the GeForce 4, the FX series, and the Ultra. So once again, very solid performance. And in Quake 3, you actually wanna avoid the early drivers and get something uh, more recent to get all the optimizations. And at 1600 by 200, we can see the older cards really struggling. So you definitely wanna have at least a GeForce 3 to get decent performance, but a GeForce 4 is even better. And uh, yeah, for the first time, we can actually see the FX series uh, beating the other cards. So um, yep, we can see just over 110 FPS on the FX 5800 and 5950 Ultra. So if you're playing Quake 3 and you wanna max out the resolution, then uh, choosing an FX series is a good option. On to the next game, we've got MDK at 640x480. Look at that, we're losing a bit of performance with the TNT2 as we use more modern drivers. The 256 gains a little speed in the, uh, at first, and then we got a peak around here, but then we're dropping off in performance. Here's the GeForce 2, we can see the same picture. Here's the GeForce 3, 4, and the FX cards. So we can kind of see maximum performance uh, around here with these drivers and performance drop uh, afterwards. At 1024 by 768, the TNT2 struggles to get to the 60 FPS. So does the GeForce 256. So you wanna have at least the GeForce uh, 2 for this game. And once again, we can see uh, the er very early drivers are not giving you decent performance. So you wanna have at least driver 631. The GeForce 3 does even better. And here we've got the 4. So once again, we can see uh, peak performance around here with these drivers, with performance falling off with the older drivers and falling off with the newer drivers. Here we've got the FX cards, and they're not doing uh, too bad. We see performance loss, but it's not as bad as with the uh, Direct 3D games. And at 1600 by 1200, we will definitely need a more powerful video card. We can see that even the GeForce 3 is not able to uh, get all the speed out of this machine whereas the GeForce 4 and the FX cards, they do really well. So in this game, I would likely pick 4523 uh, driver uh, for this game if you wanna run at 1600 by 1200. And we have one more game, Serious Sam, 640 by 480. Uh, decent performance with the TNT 2. Here we've got the 256, the GeForce 2. So we can uh, see there's uh, not as much inter interesting stuff going on, fairly consistent performance across all the driver versions. The FX cards are a little bit behind, but uh, not much. And um, what would I recommend here in terms of drivers? Well, really, um, if you've got a GeForce 256 or a GeForce 2, um, something around here uh, and you're set, but um, this game does not slow down with new drivers, so it doesn't really matter that much. At 1024 by 768. Now this also has higher details. It's got the normal quality profile and we can see the TNT struggling. The 256 uh, also struggles to hit the 60 FPS. And we can see something interesting, these two drivers being uh, faster. Let's have a look if that is also the case with the GeForce 2. Not really, but we are picking up in speed with the later drivers. And here we've got the GeForce 3, which has peak performance uh, around here, but then uh, a bit of a dip and then it goes back up and the FX cards, yeah, they're, they're not doing uh, too bad. Bit of loss uh, in performance at the end. But yeah, once again, a GeForce 3 seems to be the sweet spot for this game. And at 1600 by 200, we will see all the uh, older cards struggling. So we definitely need a GeForce 4 to get things going, to get the 60 FPS. And here's the FX series. So at 1600 by 1200, GeForce 4 seems to be the most uh, powerful and we're getting the highest performance uh, with the driver 6176. But these two drivers are also very quick. And yeah, 4523, bit of a performance dip with these two drivers. 
So guys, there you have it. I definitely need a bit of a break from benchmarking, but I'm glad I finally got around to looking at different driver versions across a range of games and video cards. Looking at the results, it's clear that the newer video cards and drivers leave a lot of performance on the table, and I will have to rethink how I do future benchmarking projects. Likely a bit of pre-testing is the way to go to make sure that we have the best combination of video card and driver. OpenGL isn't as much affected, but in direct 3D games, the performance drop with later video cards and drivers is quite shocking, and I'm still kind of processing all of this information. What do you think of these results? Share your thoughts down below in the comments. Which video card and driver version have you been using and are you going to make any changes to your retro gaming PC? And that's it for this video. If you found it useful and want to see more content like it, please subscribe, click on that notification bell and give it a like. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.